Okay. Okay, this is the latest version of Keynote. Uh, the left mouse button brings up pop-up menus. This is the main pop-up menu. The, the bar here is used to move it around, move menus around like this. Once you move a menu, it becomes permanent, um, but you can delete it with the X by pressing on the X. Uh, if you see an arrow on a menu item, that means it's a submenu like this. When a submenu comes up, you can also tear it off using the move bar like that. That menu that then becomes permanent until I delete it. Uh, some of the menus have a lot of items, so you can scroll them like this. If you have uh, menu items that you're going to use a lot, like this one, the toggle metronome, uh, you can tear it off by just dragging it off to the right, and it becomes a button that just lives on its own. So you can tear off any any number of menu items and essentially build up your own toolbars. That works for any menu item anywhere, you know, no matter how deeply nested it is. Um, so you can tear off menus and tear off menu items, and that's uh, heavily used because a lot of the menus are, are nested so deeply. Uh, Keynote consists of a lot of individual tools um, that get used both independently and um, together uh, in, in cooperation with each other. Uh, a simple one here is called Mouse Matrix. It just has a chord in each cell of the matrix, so pressing the mouse button down and dragging it produces uh, interesting effects. All the tools can be resized to any size, so you can almost make them icon size, but they still contain all the original information. Um, another small tool is the echo tool. This echoes MIDI input, so if I turn it on and play something on, on the MIDI keyboard, it echoes it. The sliders control the amount of time between echoes, the transposition, uh, if I transpose it up five, the number of times that it echoes, uh, this is the the volume decay of each echo. Um, probably the most interesting thing to do is to, to have a couple of echo tools. Keynote is multitasking, so you can ha have as many tools as you want to, all working simultaneously. Um, so let's have this one transpose up 12 steps, which is an octave. Do that three times, this other one just once. So that can be fun to play with. Um, the delete item in the main menu is used to delete windows. And the, the menu buttons themselves are uh, our windows, so you can delete them as well. Uh, the next tool is the Rift tool. 
this lets you record <coughs> MIDI input. Let me first turn on the metronome. So I'll take what I just recorded there and read it in. You'll notice I, I didn't have to do anything special to put it into record mode. Keynote is always in record mode, and so a lot of the tools, like the Rift tool, lets you load whatever was recorded in, in the near past, um, and you can control what defines the group of notes that it's going to take. In this case, it'll look backwards in time until it finds a one-beat space, and, and that'll define what notes it picks up. Um, if you had more than one beat spaces in your music, you could select this item, which would look for a four beat space. So you can take whatever you played. It's now available in this riff tool, so now I just click, and it plays the riff. I can loop it. And you can control the quantization of the loop and the, the quantization of when it starts. One of the tools you like to have up most of the time is the tempo slider. So if I start this up, I can vary the tempo. The other one used a lot is the volume slider. Let's see. The next one is the kaboom, which is a drum pattern editor. First, let me read in a drum kit, which defines what notes or what drums I'm going to be playing with. Um, I start up, and then I just click in the cells. Either clicking just toggles the uh, the cell. Rather than having each cell be completely on and completely off, I can turn on a mode uh, called gradual, where the cells fill up gradually, and depending on how full it is, that controls how often that the drum will occur on that beat. So that one will, this one will fire all the time, whereas these other three, three will only fire 25% of the time. Uh, randomly, so you'll, you'll hear the variation on each pattern. The other way you can generate uh, variations is by bringing up another Kaboom tool. Uh, you can see you can have overlapping windows, although typically you, you don't have them overlapped. Um, and you end up with lots of tools. One way you can help arrange them is with the this Arrange menu. I can arrange these two Kaboom windows horizontally. I'll point to that one, point to the second one, and now sweep out the area and it automatically resizes both of them to fit that area. I'll take the second Kaboom tool and, and change the number of steps to five. So what I'm going to do is have the 16-beat pattern 
running against a, a five beat pattern, and I'll just set um, a snare drum in there. And so you've got a constantly changing result when you play both of them together. Rather than just having drums, you can add um, regular notes to this. So I'll take, I'll play something on the MIDI keyboard, and that will become this drum, uh, this row right here. So now when I fill in that, that cells in that row, it'll play that chord. I can play something else on the MIDI keyboard. And bring that in. I was doing all adding new drums, which were notes, while the drum pattern was going. So everything can go on simultaneously. Uh, each of these buttons lets you add what you've just recorded as that drum. Uh, the other drums in this list are the, the general MIDI drums. And even these menus you can pull off, um, and they're still active and would control what what drum was on that step. You can see it doesn't handle overlap all that well. But. Um, one of the, the tools that's meant to be used in combination with, with other tools is called the bang tool. Uh, let me resize these guys. This is the bang tool by starting on the add button and stretching a line I can attach it to another tool so now this bang tool is connected to this kaboom tool and every time I press this bang button it'll send a bang message to that kaboom which tells it to play one one time through I can add a connection to this Kaboom tool, so now it'll send a message to both of those guys. Uh, you can invoke the bang tool manually, uh, but you can also have it monitor MIDI input to determine when it should, should trigger. So I can say, take that note that I just played load that and then turn it on so now it's listening to MIDI input and every time it sees that note that I'll play now it'll trigger the bang and send the bang message to these two two tools so you can have as many you know bang tools as you want to looking at different notes and controlling different things um, you could also send bangs to a riff tool to, to tell it to play what whatever phrase was in the riff tool. The, uh, the biggest tool <coughs> in terms of capability is called the group tool. 
which is pretty much your standard multi-track sequencer. I'll read in a MIDI file here. Uh, one feature when you're resizing windows, let's say I want to resize this group tool, if you just click without sweeping out anything, it will search and expand, fill whatever area there is uh, without running into anything. So here's a prelude. Um, This edit menu contains a lot of editing functions. Um, I'll show those in a second. You can view, zoom in, pan around. It's your typical piano roll display. Uh, it's multi-track. Normally you're, you're looking at the merged display, which is all the tracks together. You can view all the tracks. So here's the merged track at the top, and then three, the three tracks that it consists of. This first one has some tempo messages, and then these two tracks. Um, and you can show whichever tracks you want, although you always have to show the merged track. Uh, and you can edit just in the merged track if you want to treat everything as one, one piece. The mouse buttons don't have a fixed meaning within the group tool. Um, when you first start up the group tool, the left mouse button sweeps an area for the audition, and the right mouse button plays that area. So you can... ...play selected areas. While it's playing, you can press the right button again, and it'll turn it off, so the playing is like a toggle. Uh, but these two buttons up here control what the mouse buttons do at any given time. Um, so you can change, in this case, the left mouse button to do something else, like pick sweep. So now the left mouse button will sweep out the pick, and it turns the notes to red. Uh, the pick is the the notes that you're going to be editing, uh, and that's what the edit menu controls, or what, what it alters. So I can typically change the left mouse button to pick sweep, I can change the right mouse button to pick play, which would play the current pick. So let me pick the entire phrase and do some editing. Um, a lot of the editing functions are, are algorithmic, um, meant to just algorithmically edit things, uh, change them in somewhat random random ways. Um, got arpeggiating, copying, deleting, echoing, fading in and out, and so on. Um, what I'll do here is take that entire phrase and shuffle it, which kind of shuffles the whole thing like a deck of cards, and I'll play the result. <laughs> if I didn't like that, uh, you can always undo, and you'll usually tend to undo a lot, so I can take that undo, undo button and pull it off and undo it, so now I'm back to the original. The undo is infinite, or essentially infinite. You can undo any number of operations. I'll take this phrase and let's use skafilt. I'll leave only notes that are on the E Dorian scale. 
that's what we've got here. So it only it deleted everything that wasn't on the E Dorian scale. And that gives you this. see some of it doesn't sound anything like the original you can hear bits and pieces that, that kind of sound like the original but when you delete notes you tend to start getting rhythms that weren't present in the original uh, let me take the first couple measures here um, and pick those now when you're picking and you want to pick exactly on the measure boundaries it, it can be a little tricky if you if you zoom in you can certainly get it more accurately um, the other way to control how accurately you're picking is to uh, bring up the parameters tool this lets you control the sweep quantization and the drag quantization so I'll set the sweep quantization to a half so now when I'm sweeping, it's, it only goes in half note increments. So I'll sweep out those first two measures, and I'm going to snarf them, and then put that group away, bring up a new group, and read the snarf. The snarf is a like a clipboard buffer that you can put things into and then retrieve them from other tools. Um, so we've got this. That will pick that. Let me quantize the first note to a whole note. So essentially that shifted the whole thing so the first note begins on a whole note. And then let's repeat that eight times. So now we've got a pattern that repeats. Set the audition for the whole thing. And then I'll play, some, play something against this. take what I just played there and add it as a new track. So that's what I just played. Again, I didn't have to do anything special to put it into record mode. Um, whenever you're playing back something, it's it's recording and you can grab it, uh, if, it if it sounded good. Uh, let me go back to the original group we had, <coughs> which has the, the prelude. Um, let me undo and go back to where we started. Let me pick just a few of these notes. So I'll, I'll leave randomly one out of every seven notes. Let me take those notes and make a new track. Let's add a new track from the pick. Okay. So 
I've got this track here that contains just a few of the notes randomly dispersed. Um, I'll snarf those and then use a, an algorithm I call beat step. It basically uses those notes as root notes um, and then invents melodies based on certain rules uh, using those root notes and, and uh, rules to control what notes are allowable on what beats. So that produced these notes in this track. operations I won't show. Uh, the, the pick, the, the, the mouse buttons can do all sorts of different things. Um, if I sweep out some notes here, I'll pick some notes here, I can, I can drag them around. Notice they're going in, in, I think, whole step increments. That's because the drag quantization is a whole note. If I change it to a quarter note, now they drag in quarter note increments. I can drag the duration, again, in quarter note increments. can drag the pitch up and down. You can draw draw notes. Draw notes like you can draw volume curves. So those become volume uh, controller messages. And you can, you can draw other controller messages like pan and reverb and so on. Uh, you can open up spaces. You can close them. Uh, you can brush. So as you sweep, it plays whatever notes you're sweeping past. Or you can pluck individual notes. And these, these menus can be pulled off, so if, if you want to change the mouse button meanings often, and you usually do, you can pull off these menus, and that way you don't have to keep pulling them down. <coughs> uh, the next tool is the chord palette, which just gives you way of playing chords of various types and in particular keys. Uh, another tool is the blocks tool. Uh, this lets you construct sequences of phrases phrases you're, you're sequencing are, are from a collection. Um, the typical use of this is for drum patterns. So here I'm going to read in a collection of drum patterns. So now each 
of these four blocks has a menu that lets me select the drum pattern for that block. So I'll put Funk 1 in there, and Funk 3 in there, and Funk 7, which you notice that the length of the pattern doesn't have to be the same. This one's two measures, this one's four. I'll put break there, and you click the mouse in the, in the block that you want to start playing from. And you can turn on looping. This menu lets you control the number of blocks. So now I've got six blocks. And if I, if I come up with a sequence here that I like, I can snarf the entire thing. Let's go back to four. I can snarf this entire thing, and then I could, say, bring up a, a riff tool and read that snarf into that tool and play it from there. Or I could read it into the group tool and edit it. Uh, you can see that you end up with lots of things on the screen. Uh, there's a concept concept of pages, so I can just create a new page, a new blank page, and, and put some tools down there. Um, you notice that some of the text it, it draws with lines rather than putting the text. That's because it's too small to put the text there. So if I want to, if I resize this a little bigger, it'll it'll show the text. If it's too small, it'll just draw lines. So I can go back to the first page that has all these tools. You can also save pages. So I can take a snapshot of this page, writes it to a file, and then later on I, I can quit and then come back and read that page back in, and it'll restore the complete state of everything, including the, the contents of the tools. And that's... Well, the uh, last tool is uh, for sending controller messages. This sends controller messages on all 16 channels. I just move the slider and it sends controller values. I can send, uh, these are general MIDI kind of controller messages, expression, volume, pan, reverb, and chorus. And that's pretty much it. the end.